A 70 to 200 millimeter zoom is a staple lens for many photographers. And while it might not be quite as useful in the world of video, it still can prove useful from time to time. That said, today we are talking about another old lens. This case, or in this case, the EF 70 to 200 millimeter F4 L IS USM. Now this lens came to market in 2006 and has been subsequently replaced by a newer EF version, as well as a much more compact RF version. That said, you can still find these used and for a shooter on a budget, it may still bell be an option worth considering. Now, if you're new to all of this, you might be wondering what the heck this guy is talking about. Breathing? What is that? And how can my lens do it? Well, put simply, breathing is the term used to describe a change in angle of view that accompanies focusing. This aberration is a problem for video shooters where the change in composition while focusing can become very distracting, especially in scenes where you're repeatedly pulling focus between two actors. Fortunately, purpose-built video and cinema lenses are designed not to do this. Unfortunately for most of us using hybrid lenses on our mirrorless cameras, many of our lenses still suffer from this aberration. Now with that said, my process for testing this is pretty straightforward. I stick a pair of white targets, really it's just a bit of tape, on a black background. I then position my camera so that those two targets fall near the edge of the frame but do not fall off of it. Then I use my camera's focus bracketing function to produce a sequence of images starting at the minimum focus distance and focusing out towards infinity. Now for completeness, these test images are recorded as small JPEGs, though technically any size would work. Moreover, since there aren't any advantages to using RAW here, I don't. I do, however, have distortion correction enabled, as I think that better reflects how these lenses will be used in practice, and because there are an increasing number of lenses that will not let you disable it, and for fair comparison, I think it needs to be done that way. Now the real magic in all this process happens on the computer. I feed the JPEGs into some software that I wrote that measures the distance between the target's centers in each frame, and then ultimately compares that to the measured distance in the last frame that was taken, which, if everything went correctly, will be at infinity focus. Now since the infinity focus position tells us the lens's true angle of view, I can compare each frame to the infinity frame to determine how much the angle of view is changing, and then plot that against focus distance, image distance, or focus position, or really whatever I find interesting. So with that out of the way, let's look at the numbers, starting at 70 millimeters. Now the total angle of view shift this lens sees at 70 millimeters is just under 15% and it gets narrower, the angle of view that is, as the lens focuses closer to the camera. This means that at the minimum focus distance, we are looking at an apparent focal length of just over 80 millimeters instead of the 70 that's on the barrel. However, the total angle of view shift doesn't tell us the whole story. As the angle of view shift increases, it ha does so exponentially as the camera focuses or as the lens is focused closer to the camera. Moreover, in many cases, a small amount of shift may not be problematic enough to be a real issue. So with that in mind, I also plot the distance where the first 2% change in angle of view happens. So from infinity to the first 2%. At 70 millimeters on this lens, that 2% point happens at about 21 feet or 6.5 meters. Now the next marked focal position on this lens is 100 millimeters and so that is our next test point. Here we see the maximum angle of view shift is now up to 20.4%, again still narrower, which puts this up there among the worst performing lenses I have tested. Also, owing to the high amount of shift and the long focal length, the 2% point is now way out at 33 feet or 10 meters. Our third test point for this lens and the third marked focal length is 135 millimeters. And here we see a total angle view shift of 25.3%, again, in the narrower direction. Moreover, our 2% point continues to move further and further away. This time it is out to 50 feet or about 15 meters. 
Now for our final test run, that was done at 200 millimeters, the longest position on this lens. And about the only good news here is that the total angle of view shift is a bit better than it was at 135 millimeters. Here, I found the maximum angle of view shift was approximately 23.2% narrower at, than at infinity focus. However, owing to the long focal length and the still considerably high angle of view shift, the 2% distance is now out at around 80 feet or 25 meters. Now, okay, yes, I know. This is another one of those old obsolescent, if not outright obsolete lenses that many might argue is not worth testing or possibly even using. However, they are still out there on the used market, and they are L lenses with dust and weather sealing and still have reasonably good image quality. That said, the breathing performance on this lens was quite a shocker to me. Now, on the plus side, the angle of view shift is always in the narrower direction, which actually isn't necessarily bad if you're using this for close-up photography shooting stills. However, at 135 millimeters, the lens took the max breathing crown away from the previous holder, which was my RF 28 to 70 millimeter F2L USM, and did so by actually a pretty reasonable margin. With its maximum angle of view shift of over 25%, it has nearly 2% more angle of view shift or breathing than the 23% 0.6% that I measured on the 28 to 70 F2. Then again, I'm also not surprised. This lens is another lens that was designed and released before the hybrid DSLR thing was, well, even a thing. And in the game of trade-offs that is engineering and specifically still lens optical engineering, a stable angle of view at all focus positions has never really been a requirement. So it's not been optimized for. So with that said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can help us by liking and sharing this video. You can also support us by directly hitting or direct, you can also support us directly by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.